let me uh, get to a headline, but let me also first defend the idea of um, of 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 criticizing absolutes. I'm not a big absolute person. I've realized that over time. I think you you kind of remove thinking from the equation. Some people are very much tribal with their politics, and I'm not. Some people are very. I always think this. Okay, well that sounds like a predetermined response that you that you do. And if you speak in absolutes, like sometimes what I hear from somebody who speaks in absolutes, I never do this. I always do this. You're making me think two things. You think you're smarter than anyone you've ever talked to in the past, and I think you got to approach conversations with humility. You can stand up for yourself. You can debate a point. But I'm I'm a big fan of taking the L when the L is there to be taken, because then maybe that person will give you the win. I think that's a key to a successful marriage. I think you do that with brothers and sisters. I even think parents do that with kids sometimes, and there sure is a, a good way to do it professionally. You might have a well-reasoned opinion behind the absolute, but maybe you don't. So be wary of the absolutes. So when I say that, I'm not a union guy, and I'm not a company guy. I've known the benefits of being in unions. I watched my parents in teachers' unions their whole life get benefits, if you will, from being in a union. But I also like the idea. I've always liked working for a big company. The lights will always be on when you come. Well, usually the lights will always be on when you come in. There's lots of perks, range of insurance and benefits options. Uh, resources, equipment. Uh, of course, it's wonderful to be independent. It's wonderful to be uh, out on your own. Um, bands often get criticized when they leave a small record company and they go to the big, big guys. REM was like that. They were an R I a record company called IRS, tiny little record company. Then they went to Warner Brothers. Those sellouts. But they wanted to play to bigger audiences. They wanted more people to hear their music. So I get that. And I get the importance of unions here. So I'm not union guy and I'm not company guy either. But when I see the headline in the star, union wants 11.7% raise for Ontario education workers in bargaining proposal. I think it's important to leave that in context. I support this union getting 11.7% raise. Now, this is not the union that is already making 100 grand a year on average. This is not the OSSTF. I think they deserve a raise. I do. And, and I said earlier that I think the education workers, as in the teachers themselves, will get more than a 1% raise. Of course they're going to. And the province has already said that. So it's going to be pretty hard to backpedal on that. But the union that wants the 11.7% raise, it's clarified in the story. But I saw a lot of people, you know, have a knee-jerk reaction to that headline. And just for clarification, that's QP. That's the education workers who don't get paid very much. 55,000 workers that include the custodians, library employees, props to high school librarians and elementary school librarians, please. Education assistants, social workers, and other school employees. Here's their average salary, $39,000 per year. It's not enough. Some only earn minimum wage because what do we know about averages? Some are above it. Some are below it. We just talked about that with wait times in hospitals. And something needs to be done about this. I think it's hard to keep good people in those spots. And I think if you're a parent or if you pay taxes, and I'm sure you do, you want your public system to have good employees in those positions. Of course you need good teachers, and I'm not saying to pay teachers less. I'm saying to pay these people more. And I support getting above that inflation rate. Now, they won't get that. I want to make that clear. They won't get the 11.7%, but that's their opening gambit. And asking for 11.7%, to be honest, if we're talking real numbers here, might get them to 7 or 8%. It might. If they'd ask for 6%, they might only get 4 Have you ever been in a negotiation? That's how it works. Laura Walden is the uh, head of uh, QP OSBCU. She said this on a recent podcast about what her membership's looking for, and I agree with her. A comment like, I will take people to the hospital in my truck, really underlines the fact that he has very little respect for the professionals that keep our kids system going, right? It's a very elitist, very, you know upper kind of echelon, you know, we don't need to worry about this. We're going to worry about our big business buddies. And we're seeing that time and time again. Uh, I really see that he's more concerned with Galen Weston and Loblaws and shoppers than he is the person who tests the water 
to ensure it's safe for kids every day. Mm -hmm. That's her being a bit uh, critical of Doug Ford, Stephen Lecce, and what they've done with education. And I got all day, I always have, I've got all day and some of the night to criticize how public education has been run in this province in the last four years. And I got time for the government before that and the government before that. I'm a huge advocate for public education. I grew up in the system. Parents taught in the system. Kids are in the system. It matters to me. It matters to my household. Um, But I would say there was some obfuscation by union members about getting kids back into school and how safe it was. Okay, I don't want to lay that completely at the doorstep of Laura Walton and QP, but the idea that they were in jeopardy and in danger when there were high quality masks and the vaccines available to them, I I would dismiss that somewhat. But here's where I back Laura Walton 100 percent. Her union's members need real wages. They also need security. They need to know and parents need to know that these are important services. Okay, it doesn't matter if your kids in grade seven or grade 12 teachers matter. Okay, department heads matter. The people that look after your kids, give them marks, give them their homework to take home and put their arm around them figuratively or literally when it's needed are super important. But so are the support staff around them. It doesn't work. It's a it's a it's a when the spoke gets out of the wheel, the tire goes flat. It's a big, big problem. Here's Laura Walton in a news conference after the re-election of the Ford government saying we're going to negotiate this summer, but here's some of the things we're looking for. To guarantee that service improvements for students are in place for this September, as well as real wage increases above that of the rate of inflation to address low pay and problems that are happening with retention and recruitment. Many school boards cannot recruit nor retain qualified education workers in a large part because wages are so low and jobs are so precarious. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we have worked both in schools and off-site, at times risking our own and our families' health and safety. We took these risks so that students could keep learning, schools would be kept secure, and families and our communities had the support they needed. We got to help these frontline education workers. They do need a raise. They probably won't get the 11.7 percent they're asking for, but I support the ask because it'll get them to a better number. Thirty nine thousand dollars is not enough. And I'm not just talking about the people that have to go to school, serve your kids food in the cafeteria, clean up after them in the bathrooms, in the hallways, the custodians, the maintenance workers, make sure the Internet's working. That's pretty important. All that stuff. You can't pay those people like you do 19 year old retail workers. You can't do it. You can't pay them like they're a cashier at Old Navy. And I'm not saying that's not important, but we have lines of delineation here. And there's teachers are not. These aren't teachers. And that's important to point out. And I've seen some of the response and I've seen the story in other media outlets framed the wrong way. This isn't OSSTF asking for an 11 percent increase. This isn't the Ontario Uh, This is an ETFO. We had Karen Brown on last week talking about what that union's looking for from the province. They're not asking for an 11 percent raise hike above inflation. I agree that would be um, easily dismissed, not very popular and wouldn't land well with the vast majority of human beings in the province. But remember what I said at the start, not a big fan of absolutes, not a big fan of them. So, well, I am not union guy. Well, I am not company guy. I think there's workable scenarios here. I've watched this government, the Ford government, spend an awful lot of money on an awful lot of things. And I think one of the things they can prioritize is the backbone of what we're doing in our schools right now. We need that more than ever. We need normalcy in schools.